Epilogue from Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Informal Talks on Zen Meditation and Practice. Shonryo Suzuki. This is the 50th Anniversary Edition. Epilogue. Zen Mind. Before the rain stops, we can hear a bird. Even under the heavy snow, we see snowdrops and some new growth. Here in America, we cannot define Zen Buddhists the same way we do in Japan. American students are not priests, and yet not completely laymen. I understand it this way, that you are not priests is an easy matter, but that you are not exactly laymen is more difficult. I think you are special people and want some special practice that is not exactly priest's practice and not exactly layman's practice. You are on your way to discovering some appropriate way of life. I think this is our Zen community, our group. But we must also know what our undivided original way is and what Dogen's practice is. Dogen Zenji said that some may attain enlightenment and some may not. This is a point I am very much interested in. Although we all have the same fundamental practice which we carry out in the same way, some may attain enlightenment and some may not. It means that even if we have no experience of enlightenment, if we sit in the proper way with the right attitude and understanding of practice, then that is sin. The main point is to practice seriously, and the important attitude is to understand and have confidence in big mind. We say big mind, or small mind, or Buddha mind, or Zen mind. And these words mean something, you know, but something we cannot and should not try to understand in terms of experience. We talk about enlightenment experience, but it is not some experience we will have in terms of good or bad, time or space, past or future. It is experience or consciousness beyond those distinctions or feelings. So, we should not ask, what is enlightenment experience? That kind of question means you do not know what Zen experience is. Enlightenment cannot be asked for in your ordinary way of thinking. When you are not involved in this way of thinking, you have some understanding, some chance of understanding what Zen experience is. The big mind in which we must have confidence is not something which you can experience objectively. It is something which is always with you, always on your side. Your eyes are on your side for you cannot see your eyes and your eyes cannot see themselves. Eyes only see things outside, objective things. If you reflect on yourself, that self is not your true self anymore. You cannot project yourself as some objective thing to think about. The mind, which is always on your side, is not just your mind. It is universal mind, always the same, not different from another's mind. It is Zen mind. It is big, big mind. This mind is whatever you see. Your true mind is always with whatever you see. Although you do not know your own mind, it is there. At the very moment you see something, it is there. This is very interesting. Your mind is always with the things you observe. So you see, this mind is at the same time everything. True mind is watching mind. You cannot say, this is myself, my small mind, or my limited mind, and that is big mind. <laughs> that is limiting yourself, restricting your true mind, objectifying your mind. Bodhidharma said, in order to see a fish, you must watch the water. Actually, when you see the water, you see the true fish. Before you see Buddha nature, you watch your mind. 
When you see the water there is true nature. True nature is watching water. When you say, my Zazen is very poor, here you have true nature, but foolishly, you do not realize it. You ignore it on purpose. There is immense importance in the eye with which you watch your mind. That eye is not the big eye. It is the eye which is incessantly active, always swimming, always flying through the vast air with wings. By wings, I mean thought and activity. The vast sky is home, my home. There is no bird or air. When the fish swims, water and fish are the fish. There is nothing but fish. Do you understand? You cannot find Buddha nature by vivisection. Reality cannot be caught by thinking or feeling mind. Moment after moment to watch your breathing, to watch your posture is true nature. There is no secret beyond this point. We Buddhists do not have any idea of material only or mind only or the products of our mind or mind as an attribute of being. What we are always talking about is that mind and body, mind and material, are always one. But if you listen carelessly, it sounds as if we are talking about some attribute of being or about material or spiritual. That will be a version of it, maybe. But actually, we are pointing out mind, which is always on this side, which is true mind. Enlightenment experience is to figure out to understand, to realize this mind which is always with us and which we cannot see. Do you understand? If you try to attain enlightenment as if you see a bright star in the sky, it will be beautiful and you may think, ah, this is enlightenment. But that is not enlightenment. That understanding is literally heresy. Even though you do not know it, in that understanding, you have the idea of material only. Dozens of your enlightenment experiences are like that. Some material only, some object of your mind. As if through good practice, you found that bright star. That is the idea of self and object. It is not the way to seek for enlightenment. The Zen school is based on our actual nature, on our true mind as expressed and realized in practice. Zen does not depend on a particular teaching, nor does it substitute teaching for practice. We practice Zazen to express our true nature, not to attain enlightenment. Bodhidharma's Buddhism is to be practice, to be enlightenment. At first, this may be a kind of belief, but later, it is something the student feels or already has. Physical practice and rules are not so easy to understand, maybe especially for Americans. You have an idea of freedom which concentrates on physical freedom, on freedom of activity. This idea causes you some mental suffering and loss of freedom. You think you want to limit your thinking. You think some of your thinking is unnecessary or painful or entangling. But you do not think you want to limit your physical activity. For this reason, Hayakuju establishes the rules and way of Zen in China. He was interested in expressing and transmitting the freedom of true mind. Zen mind is transmitted in our Zen way of life based on Hayakuju's rules. I think we naturally need some way of life as a group and as Zen students in America, and as Hayakuju established our way of monastic life in China. I think we must establish an American way of Zen life. I am not saying this jokingly. I am pretty serious, but I do not want to be too serious. If we become too serious, we will lose our way. If we are playing games, we will lose our way. Little by little, with patience and endurance, we must find the way for ourselves, find out how to live with ourselves and with each other. In this way, we will find out our precepts. If we practice hard, concentrate on Zazen, and organize our life so that we can sit well, we will find out what we are doing. But 
you have to be careful in the rules and way you establish. If it is too strict, you will fail. If it is too loose, the rules will not work. Our way should be strict enough to have authority, an authority everyone should obey. The rules should be possible to observe. This is how Zen tradition was built, decided little by little, created by us in our practice. We cannot force anything, but once the rules have been decided, we should obey them completely until they are changed. It is not a matter of good or bad, convenient or inconvenient. You just do it without question. That way, your mind is free. The important thing is to obey your rules without discrimination. This way you will know the pure Zen mind. To have our own way of life means to encourage people to have a more spiritual and adequate way of life as human beings. I think one day you will have your own practice in America. The only way to study pure mind is through practice. Our inmost nature wants some medium, some way to express and realize itself. We answer this inmost request through our rules, and patriarch after patriarch shows us his true mind. In this way, we will have an accurate, deep understanding of practice. We must have more experience of our practice. At least, we must have some enlightenment experience. You must put confidence in the big mind which is always with you. You should be able to appreciate things as an expression of big mind. This is more than faith. This is ultimate truth which you cannot reject. Whether it is difficult or easy to practice, difficult or easy to understand, you can only practice it. Priest or layman is not the point. To find yourself as someone who is doing something is the point. To resume your actual being through practice, to resume the you, which is always with everything, with Buddha, which is fully supported by everything, right now. You may say it is impossible, but it is possible. Even in one moment, you can do it. It is possible this moment. It is this moment. That you can do it in this moment means you can always do it. So, if you have this confidence, this is your enlightenment experience. If you have the strong confidence in your big mind, you are already a Buddhist in the true sense, even though you do not attain enlightenment. That is why Dojen Zenji says, do not expect that all who practice Zazen will attain enlightenment about this mind, which is always with us. He meant, if you think that big mind is somewhere outside yourself, outside of your practice, then that is a mistake. Big mind is always with us. That is why I repeat the same thing over and over when I think you do not understand. Zen is not just for the man who can fold his legs or who has great spiritual ability. Everyone has Buddha nature. We must each find some way to realize our true nature. The purpose of practice is to have direct experience of the Buddha nature, which everyone has. Whatever you do should be the direct experience of Buddha nature. Buddha nature means to be aware of Buddha nature. Your effort should extend to saving all sentient beings. If my words are not good enough, I'll hit you. Then you will understand what I mean. And if you do not understand me just now, someday you will. Someday someone will understand. I will wait for the island I was told is moving slowly up the coast from Los Angeles to Seattle. I feel Americans, especially young Americans, have a great opportunity to find out the true way of life for human beings. You are quite free from material things, and you begin Zen practice with a very pure mind, a beginner's mind. You can understand Buddha's teaching exactly as he meant it. But we must not be attached to America or Buddhism or even to our practice. We must have beginner's mind, free from possessing anything. A mind that knows everything is in flowing change. Nothing exists but momentarily in its present form and color. One thing flows into another 
and cannot be grasped. Before the rain stops, we hear a bird. Even under the heavy snow, we see snowdrops and some new growth. In the east, I saw rhubarb already. In Japan, in the spring, we eat cucumbers. If we try to listen to something wonderful, <laughs> it means that to ignore the bird which we are listening now. You know, when you think Buddha said something wonderful, and I must you know, find out what he meant, then your mind is directed to Buddha's words. So you don't hear the birds. So always we, we sacrifice uh, various uh, actual reality. So our way is rather to enjoy you know, our life right now without sacrificing. This is a kind of desire you know, which human being has. To some extent, desires we have, it's <coughs> good. But if we are enslaved by desire, you know, we lose whole being.